Welcome everybody, today we are going to make some silver 1 oxide which we are going to use to make a chemical called silver trifluoroacetate. Why do we need silver trifluoroacetate? Well, I'm not going to reveal it now, but it's for an interesting project. In order to make silver 1 oxide only three things are needed. Sodium hydroxide, distilled water and silver nitrate. As always, here's the disclaimer, don't try this at home and let's dive right into this experiment. To weigh out the reagents, I'm using a very accurate scale, because I don't want to waste more silver nitrate than I actually intend to. We weighed out exactly 10 grams of silver nitrate. As you can see, silver nitrate is this beautiful white crystalline solid. To be able to continue with the experiment, we need to dissolve the silver nitrate in some distilled water. Therefore we added it to a beaker, followed by a bunch of distilled water. The exact amount doesn't matter, as long as all of the silver nitrate is dissolved. Before proceeding, we quickly dropped in a stirfish. The next reagent to be weighed out is sodium hydroxide. We use 3.2 grams of sodium hydroxide, which represents a huge excess, in order to make sure that all of the silver nitrate reacts. I already said it way too many times, but add sodium hydroxide to water and it's not the other way around. I still added water to the sodium hydroxide and then swirled around the beaker. Silver oxide is nearly insoluble in water anyways, therefore it doesn't matter if huge amounts of water are needed because it won't have an impact on the yield. After turning on the magnetic stirrer, we are finally ready to start the reaction. The solutions of sodium hydroxide and silver nitrate only have to be combined. After combining them, you immediately see this blackish brown precipitate. As silver 1 plus ions react with hydroxide ions, insoluble silver 1 oxide crashes out and water is formed. To get out all of the sodium hydroxide, the beaker was rinsed with a small amount of water, which was then combined with the silver 1 oxide suspension. To make all of the silver nitrate react, the speed of the magnetic stir was dialed up and everything was allowed to stir for about 10 minutes. 10 minutes later, the magnetic stirrer was turned off and as you can see, the silver oxide quickly settled down. When I made mercuric oxide, it also settled down quite quickly and this reminded me of it. As it settled down anyways, we can decant off the first part of the solution without having to filter it. This part of the solution should contain leftover sodium hydroxide and also sodium nitrite. To get rid of even more of the contaminants, the silver oxide was rinsed with a generous amount of distilled water. For the rest and to make drying even easier, we are going to use a vacuum filtration. The filter paper was wetted with a little bit of water beforehand in order not to make it slip and expose any of the holes. Afterwards, the silver oxide suspension was simply put into the filter. Before shutting off the vacuum, even more distilled water was used to rinse the silver oxide. Afterwards, the vacuum was pulled for two more minutes to get rid of as much of the water as possible. Because silver oxide is insoluble in water, it sticks to everything and it's hard to clean. Normally you would clean the stains using nitric acid, but welcome to Germany where you can't do that, therefore I decided to go with acetic acid, but formic acid works even better. Acetic or formic acid react with silver oxide to form silver acetate or silver formate. Silver formate is even more soluble in water than silver acetate, which makes formic acid the preferable cleaning agent. Dissolving silver oxide in formic or acetic acid will take some time, but heating up the mixture will speed it up a lot. Normally you would try to recover the silver, but the amount of silver that is going to be in solution at the end of this, it's going to be very small. So I'm not going to recycle it, but it shouldn't be put into the environment and therefore I'm just going to add it to my heavy metal waste. Of course silver oxide is still somewhat valuable and therefore I try to scratch as much of it out of the filtration funnel. The silver oxide is still slightly damp, so it will have to be dried. As silver oxide will decompose at about 130 degrees celsius, it is not recommended to dry it on a hot plate because it will simply decompose to form oxygen and silver. Other ways to dry it have to be employed. Air drying would work just fine, but I'm not a fan of it, therefore we are going to use a vacuum desiccator. Drying took only one day. The next day it was perfectly dry and now it's time to transfer to a suitable storage container. Once the big chunks were broken up, they were transferred to a piece of paper to take a few nice pictures. As a storage container, I am using this good looking glass bottle. It was placed on a scale and the scale was set to zero. As it turns out, I couldn't use my small scale because the container is too heavy. Therefore, I had to use this other scale and we ended up with 6.7 grams of silver 1 oxide. This corresponds to yields 
of about 98.2%. And there you go, this is how you make silver one oxide. If you liked today's video, make sure to drop me a like. If you don't want to miss out on further chemistry content like that, make sure to subscribe. And as always, I have to thank my patrons. You guys make it possible to film even more expensive stuff. So really, thank you. If you want to become a patron too, make sure to check the link in the description. I wanted to make osmium tetroxide on a tizoid sized scale and it would help me out a lot if you join my Patreon. I wish all of you a great day. See you in the next video.